What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Fireside with Fathers. Um, tonight we have, I think, a very special and moving um, episode. My parents are on, mom and dad, and we're going to be talking about my little niece, Susanna Hope, who um, had a short life and who recently died and was buried. But I think there's a lot that we're going to hopefully get out of all this, and I have mom and dad on because they've been there firsthand living the whole thing. And it's it's a real real life experience. And um, I think there's a lot that we can get out of it. So hopefully you enjoy it and share it um, because this is something that's very uh, relevant nowadays as well, especially when moms get pregnant and they, found out, they find out there's some defect in the baby, as in the case of Susanna Hope. And they get worried and they get nervous, they get anxious and they get all sorts of advice from all sorts of people. And it's a hard time, so it is something that, that people would be going through. So share this on and pass it on. And uh, before we start, I'd like to invoke our Blessed Mother so we can give everything into her hands and um, distance from ourselves all problems or any other attacks. So we'll start with the Hail Mary, in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as we're talking and just going through this whole thing, you guys, if you want more information, just people listening, there's something called Caring Bridge, and it's just basically like, there were like daily journal entries that... People were doing mostly my mom, um, and that link hopefully will be in the description below so you guys can get more on that. And it's also good for, like I said, people who would be going through something similar. So I found out about six months ago that my sister-in-law, Brienne, who married my brother Samuel uh, around, actually they married the same week that my brother James got married. I would guess, I'm saying probably 11 years ago, I could be wrong, 10 to 11 years ago, because I, I remember I was still studying in Rome and I went back for the wedding. And while I was at James's wedding, Samuel got married. So I missed Samuel's wedding. They kind of eloped because they were in love. And to be honest, in the beginning, I didn't know if it was going to work out. If it was just one of these things that was just going to be like a spark um, because they were at the same high school and they fell in love and they got married right after. But they're still married and they have six children, a, a very beautiful family, adorable kids, um, very bright. Uh, I just got to see them. Um, Last March, there was another wedding, and we all went out and played mini golf together, and it was one of uh, one of my cherished memories, actually, playing mini golf with Samuel and Brienne. So if you see the picture, Samuel is bigger than me, but he's my younger brother, so he can't beat me up. <laughs> um, it's a psychological thing. Uh, he might be massive, but I'm still the older brother. So, But um, yeah, I found out about six months ago that Susanna, um, Brienne was pregnant with Susanna, and the first things, Susanna Hope, the first things that I think were described to me is that they she had trisomy 13 so what they could see or what they could tell she wouldn't have eyes um i don't know if she would have extra fingers or a lack of fingers but there's gonna be something there with the fingers or the toes and she wasn't gonna live very long so i remember that was when that was told to me it was i was stressed about to go into mass and so i had the mass for Susanna hope and for anything you know that could come out of of her life and i remember it was actually a mass for a group of girls there was about 50 girls there it was a little um get together that the sisters were having and i remember i was just preaching about how all these girls had both their eyes they had all their fingers and they had good parents and i just basically got a reflection like what were they doing with their lives but um from that moment till now i think Susanna has really also Susanna hope has gotten a, a bit of a hold on me and i do feel very close to her and i have been living this whole thing that's why I wanted to get you guys on, Mom and Dad, um, because I think there's something big here to be said with, I mean, the culture we're living in, obviously, I don't know, was she even, I, I don't know, I didn't actually hear this firsthand, but I, I heard that she was also maybe counseled of even ending, terminating the pregnancy. Is that true? Like, they, were at, they, they asked her if she wanted an abortion? I, that's always an option, and that had been offered at one point. That's very standard fare. Um, they was, I think it might have been during an ultrasound that the doctor noticed that there might be some anomalies. And so Brienne had an amniocentesis. 
And when she received the diagnoses, she and Samuel together, and they were told that Susanna Hope had trisomy 13. The doctor just went through a litany of so many things that could be wrong with her that I think they both sort of just sort of shut down because it was such devastating news to begin with because it meant that she probably was not going to live. And so um, abortions never on the op would never be an option for either one of them. But in today's culture, that's the first thing that's offered. So they opted out of that naturally and said, no, um, we're going to go through the pregnancy. And so began their journey, which I think for a woman is a very challenging journey, knowing that you're carrying your baby for months, knowing that you're going to deliver your baby and that there's going to be trouble at the other side. And uh, although it seems like you would have time to prepare as a mother, it's a, a big conflict of, of interest and hearts. So it was quite a journey for both of them. So Brienne and Samuel heard that, and it was um, like, I think you had described it, that they went through that whole litany of things that was going to be wrong, and they just stopped because that was the, just they had heard enough. And they just said, we're going we're gonna to have Susanna, um, and we're going to bring her into this world. I remember Samuel sent me a message, and he said that he wanted to, he was praying that he was going to be able to hold her because he said it was it was one thing. He knew he was a father. They had that very clear from the beginning that that there was there was a person there, and he said he knew he was a father, but for him it was like holding her that that was going to be the moment where he's really he really felt that like he was her dad. So he was asking me advice as far as theology goes if he could baptize her or whatnot. But um, that's this very natural thing for the dad for dads for sure. Dad was like that when we found out that Andre had trisomy twenty one. Dad didn't want to hear anything until he was born and he would hold him and he said it would be okay then. Holding Susanna Hope was very important for Samuel and Brienne and as they got further along in the pregnancy, it became so important because the doctor said, what do you want to do? Do you want to go full term? Or what's your primary goal right now? And they both said to hold our baby. So she was, um, she was, she delivered three weeks early, three weeks earlier from her due date. Uh, and they were able to hold her for sure. She lived for, um, I mean, to me, it was five days because it was Monday through Friday. But when they count them according to the clock, it's four days. That's what they put in the obituary. It's just a detail. But for us, she was with us for five days. So they were able to hold in. There's, there's. I remember I did. you guys sent us moving pictures of them in the hospital and um, of just Brienne and Samuel and Susanna. And was that an impact? Like the doctors, what were they thinking? Because like, I don't know how, I don't know if they're used to you know, mom's finding out about this and then being on board to bring about the baby and have the baby. What was the reaction there in the, the hospital? Culturally, it's, uh, we're so um, attuned to, to just not suffer and et cetera, et cetera. So it was unusual, I think, for Samuel and Brienne's baby, Susanna Hope, to, she was in the neonatal intensive care unit and she received excellent care and Brienne and Samuel were, made such an impression on the doctors and the nurses because she was their one and only. They were there 24 hours a day. And uh, they held her as much as they could. They did skin to skin. Um, they were with her through, um, she would have episodes where she'd stop breathing. And they brought their children in. And they set up a special room where the children could come in and meet her and, and hold her. And uh, Dad and I went up and we saw her. And Brienne's mom saw her. And it's, uh, it was just a real, the doctor, one of the neonatal doctors uh, told me that she was really impressed with our family because she actually had never seen it. Because it is often the case that people will leave their babies that have deformities or um, certain illnesses and they're not going to make it, that they leave them in the neonatal intensive care unit and they die by themselves. They just leave them, they just, leave, they so just walk away, for, just leave them there yeah. to the... Yes. Yeah, and so the nurses was she was seeing yeah. the family actually coming in. I mean, these pictures are coming up, and they're uh, this is Emma there with with Susan. It's adorable. Yeah, they had, a, they had a special room because of COVID and everything. They had a special room that they would set up where the family could be, and uh, the family could. They had a chance to meet Susanna Hope and hold her, and uh, even on uh, for Samuel and Brienne, it was a journey, um, kind of a classic. Conflict because Samuel um, is a dad and he wants to do everything he can 
to protect, nurture, and save his family. And for Brianna's mom, she obviously would have wanted that, but knew that there was not necessarily those options for Susanna. And so between the two of them, they had to come together as a couple to reach an agreement, to find a place where they agreed together. And actually that's one of the gifts. And I think one of the miracles of Susanna Hope is that there was one night that they just decided to pray a rosary with Susanna and not to have any intention. They were just gonna pray a rosary. So they prayed a rosary together with Susanna. And during that rosary, there was a melting away of any kind of interference, division, um, old wounds and hurts, just there was a total healing for both of them. And they were both able to come together and to agree on what to do. And they had taken a whole day to think about, they had three options. And they came together at the end of that and they each told their option and they actually had chosen the same option. And the option was to bring Susanna Hope home and to let her die at home. So they both agreed to that and the um, hospital said they would make preparations and the following week they would send them home with equipment, with training, and they could have Susanna with them in their home until she died. So, uh, but that night, Susanna Hope also was part of the plan with Susanna Hope would sort of dictate how things were going to go. They could take cues from her if she was getting worse or better, how she was tolerating certain things. And so she started getting into trouble Thursday night. And um, by Friday morning, Brianna and Samuel both knew that she was dying. And so um, uh, Mercy and I took the, we went up with the kids and we were in a special room. And so we were all together when she did die. And it was quite an anointed experience because it was sort of like being at home. The kids were drawing, um, some of them were doing arts and crafts. Some of them were drawing pictures. Uh, William was reading a book to Susanna. He was holding her and he was reading a book to her. And uh, it was in some ways as uh, cozy of a replica as you could get. And, uh, and she, that she died in, in that environment with her family. And dad, what do you think about the, uh, I don't know, like this whole thing, I was just looking at the pictures as they were going up and it seems like, I don't know, like such an, like, a, I don't like a natural experience. Like you have all the kids there, they're holding her and they, they know she's gonna, I, I, from what I can tell, she's gonna die. Like, what did you think? What was your thoughts on that of like the kids and them and them seeing little Susanna Hope knowing that she wasn't quote unquote normal and that she was going to probably die within a couple of days? Well, uh, watching the process um, for for Samuel and Brianne's family and for Samuel and Brianne and their relationship, there's pre Susanna and post Susanna. And the moment Susanna visited them, and that incorporates the pregnancy uh, and the birth and the subsequent death. Um, it was um, one chain link after another of miraculous events because they were real and they were true. And the children, they weren't uh, protected from the reality that uh, Susanna had some severe disabilities. Um, and they uh, they did ink um, they 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 put Susanna's hand in little ink and and put it on a paper and then they drew on that um, as a family and then they had to decide what kind of card they wanted to make for Susanna's uh, obituary and they all chose uh, the hand that she had six fingers on. And I found that very interesting because they acknowledged it and they accepted it. Um, they embraced it. And it was it, special. It, it was, was very it special was, to them. It, it was very special to them. It and, was her mark. And, um, and it's part of this story, part of this reality is, um, and I don't mean to take liberty where there's not liberty, uh, but um, Brianne, Samuel's wife, mother of Susanna, when she was a little girl, um, her younger sister was born and had trisomy 19. And her younger sister 
like Susanna, lived a very short period of time, but did live a, a while. And then Brianne, as a young girl, experienced her family um, really going through tremendous conflict and ending with the parents separating and divorcing. And one of the profound memories Brianne had of her sister being born was um, that the, the children were asked uh, not to be happy because they were living through something that was very sad. And that was such a, a, a heavy burden for Brianne to carry. And in God's grace and his mercy and his wisdom, she relives it with her own child, her own daughter. And um, the day before Susanna died, uh, she had the children, uh, and she and Samuel took the rest of their children to a park right next to the hospital, and they played games, and they romped, and they were happy together, and they had a bit of a, a feast as a picnic, um, and they celebrated uh, because they, as a couple and as a family, decided to embrace the reality that God the Father is loving and that they didn't do anything wrong to deserve um, any punishment or anything, that it was actually a gift, that God the Father had given them a gift in Susanna Hope. And it didn't look exactly like they might have thought it might look, but they received it as such, and they experienced the same pain and anxiety and angst of a baby uh, being carried to term and, and born, um, and then dying, but they received it as gift so that they can always look back in the moment and, um, and see it as, as something that's very, very positive, very positive. And that being said, it was gift, but it was suffering. But it was suffering. It was suffering. There was, there was huge suffering for all of them. And I remember when Mercy and I were coming home with the children after we left the hospital that day that, that Susanna had died. And um, I, I, we had this conversation. I said, you know, some people would say that what happened, having the kids there, that was traumatic. And what a, what a trauma that was. And Mercy and I both agreed, trauma is not the right word. And, and if we said it's traumatic, then that sort of is a label. If, if, if you said the kids were traumatized, that's a label they get to carry around and could become an issue later on in life. But that wasn't it, because it's not what we experienced. It wasn't a trauma. It was, um, it was life. It was death. It was a suffering. It was an event. It was hard. It was painful. It was all of those things. But here they had this opportunity. They met death for the first time, but they met it in and through their family. So in and through the arms of love. And, and so it, it was important not to say that's traumatic. Um, there is bereavement, that's separate, and it was suffering. But I think it was something for all of us, this is one of the, another sort of a, a spiritual experience, was the beauty of suffering. The real beauty of suffering, uh, because it's the cross. And Samuel and Brienne embraced it. And the children in their own ways embraced it. And now they each have sort of a thread that they'll hold on to and they'll follow it to find the meaning in it. For each of them, there'll be a different meaning of Susanna's life and her death. But it'll be all right because God's in charge. Well, there's a lot of people that were that were writing me as well and they were following this those little journal entries that you were doing. Um, and one one mom said that she felt like when she saw one of the pictures of one of Brienne and Samuel's, I don't know if it was William or, or Jude, maybe it was Jude, like holding Susanna Hope. Um, how she, her reflection was when these, when these guys grow up or in their adolescence or they're going through like a crisis of, you know, maybe an interior emptiness or they have this like low self-esteem or whatever people call it nowadays. They're just, you know, when they see that mom and dad loved Susanna Hope and it was like it's there's no way that that was a trauma I think this is something that's going to be because trauma is also burned into somebody like in a bad sense but like this is going to be something burned into them in a positive sense that they they saw the way mom and dad looked at Susanna Hope 
Um, the six finger thing I had did not know about that, but that's extremely beautiful how they chose that that was going to be her obituary sign. But they knew that Susanna had six fingers, uh, the, the, the Quincy eyes. Um, she was deformed. But the way mom and dad looked at her and the, what they went through to because they were loving her to bits, these guys will never forget that. So when they're in some kind of so-and-so crisis moment or they, they're feeling maybe ugly or they they don't have, you know, whatever it takes, that that love that they saw in mom and dad is going to be a huge, massive pillar. Because if they loved her, you know, regardless of anything, it doesn't matter, like, what I look like or what's going on. They're, they're, they're just madly in love with me. I thought that was a good, massive lesson, I think, for for these little ones. And I think that the um, the other thing, Lucas, uh, during her during the night during the pregnancy, uh, the kids celebrated Susanna. The family celebrated. They really did. They they um, she was a real person when she you know as Brienne's belly got bigger and bigger, and um, you know when they would talk to her and uh, and it was just uh, she was with them. She was with them. They would had uh, special things picked out for her and. Uh, so it was, it was part of that, that journey. And, uh, I have to just sort of sidebar here to say that uh, some of the things that I heard during Brianne's pregnancy and, um, and some of the things I heard later, uh, and I think it's fairly common. Uh, I hope that Brianne didn't hear it a lot from people, um, because it's a, it's a total clueless approach. Um, I did hear from one person, why didn't she have an abortion? Like, it's just status quo. Like, like this person is just like, well, why didn't she? Like, that's a no-brainer. And, uh, and, and other things that would indicate, so for example, after Susanna died, um, somebody said to me, um, uh, well, she was only five days old. Well, I don't get it. And I said, what don't you get? Well, I don't get it. It's, it's not like it's not like she's five or six or ten, and um, and I just thought, wow, you really don't get it. And then there'd be another person that when they find out that it was just a baby, um, a little newborn infant, they would they would express relief. Oh, what's that? What is that relief? What are you feeling relieved from? And and it's a marker to me of how inculcated we are and how nihilistic our cultures become that we can be so uh, so out to lunch that we don't recognize that she was a person. She was a human being. She was created by God. And and I think that, um, and Samuel Brian, and, and that's why um, when father was saying the homily for her, for her funeral, he looked right at them and he said, he was smiling and he said, Brian, Samuel, and he knows the kids and all the kids, God sent Susanna hope to you because she knew you would love her and that you wouldn't throw her away, that, that she would count and she would always count. And so she always will. She's a part of all of our lives right now. Well, the fact that Samuel and Brienne, I mean, like I said, they had six, six, they have six children. Um, I don't think they're going to make it to 14. I don't, I don't think any of, of the boys or girls at that, what the rate they're going, um, we'll get to where you guys got. Um, but, the fact that they have a large, well, they have a large family in the eyes of a lot of people, six. Um, like a lot of parents are kind of worried because they don't know how to parent. They don't know if they're making the right decisions. Then you get to high school and then they start kind of getting into certain things, whatever. And it, the worry that they have, especially when they're living their faith, is to get their kids on the path, you know, living grace. And it's just a, it's a huge thing. And so, like, they have one packaged up. It's like, so Santa Hope received her sacraments. She's shot up into heaven. And I think a lot of times we underestimate what that means to have somebody so close. So if Brienne, from the beginning of conception till bringing her to life and seeing her, you know, was making the decisions to love her and to be her mom and Samuel the same as being her dad and loving her, the repercussions that that have in heaven um, – are massive the fact that they brought one in to life and brought him up to heaven packaged him up it's like an anchor up there which is going to bring down massive massive abundances of of graces which is a spiritual you know as you guys know you like it's a spiritual reality but it's real and things are gonna things are gonna move and they're gonna happen and i think i, I have personally already felt and experienced some of those um, on a personal level 
And uh, I think I think there's going to be a lot more. And the fact that they named her Suzanne the Hope for me is it's just something here in Ireland. I just I think every other thing I'm trying to do is is promote hope because we just lost it. People are just looking at the ground. You know what we have here, and there's no reference to another life. When, Sorry. When uh, we were at the funeral, at the um, when the funeral was over, and, and the uh, um, the cars were being directed. People, some people came to the cemetery, some didn't. Uh, and Samuel was um, was where his vantage point, waiting for the cars to empty out so that the, the the procession could begin. Said he saw so many people that were not coming to the cemetery, but had come to the funeral that he knew, and he didn't know their names, but he knew where they sat in church. And he said it was just remarkable. He could, he, he just was automatic. And I said, well, that, I don't know where that person sits over. And and frankly, it, there was no way to really communicate in a timely fashion that there was going to be a funeral for Susanna Hope, that she had died. And there was a funeral because very few people get the newspaper anymore and it's online. But if you don't get something online, you wouldn't know. And we had people that had found out late. They'd been someplace and they heard there was the funeral and they rushed over there because they really esteem and love Samuel and Brianne and their kids. And they were with us, I mean, as a community. Uh, and the number of cars that followed to the cemetery was so long that there were police at the intersection directing traffic. And I, I just think that was a, a pretty significant witness um, to travel out to the, to the cemetery. And yourself, Dad? What, so sorry, they really did. Go ahead. It was just she had an impact. I was going to ask you, Dad, your experience at the funeral. What was that like for you? Well, there were really three experiences with Susanna Hope that I personally changed me personally. And the first one was holding her in the hospital. Uh, Mom and I got special permission as the grandparents. Because of COVID-19, there are very high restrictions at the hospital. Uh, so we got to go into the neonatal unit, and um, I um, I was very typical me. I kind of undressed her, look at her little body. Um, she she had a beautiful little body; it was all there. And um, I looked at her feet, and she had six toes. And I uh, made a genuinely warm kind of joke, humor. And I said, "Oh, look, she's got the family toe." Um, <laughs> as one might reference a grandchild or a child. Um, and the nurse looked at me because I didn't, I don't think that she knew uh, my sense of humor or my, uh, how I uh, express, um, ex express tenderness. And, um, but to hold her and to see her, and um, I made her cry a little bit. I grabbed her leg because she had a little body and I have big hands and, the only thing I could really grab on her was her leg, and I kind of squoze it a little bit, and she gave out a whimper. And I said, that's right, I'm bothering you. That's my job. And I, it was like a, a bonding and an attachment that was uh, real and forever. I knew that she was whole. I knew that she was there. And, um, and the, the second moment that really, really impacted me was um, um, Samuel honored me by allowing me to build her her little box, her little coffin. And I built it in a shop and um, Colby helped me uh, craft a cross that went on the top of the box. And and then on top of the wooden cross, we put a, a brass cross and we tied the brass cross onto the wooden cross. Um, and um, so I took the, the, the coffin we made and I brought it to the, to the mortuary um, and um, and I committed her to the box. And I, I went with Antonia, it was Antonia and myself, and uh, we went and we, we prayed over her. And um, I placed a wooden, a wooden cross that I had made that was separate from the coffin onto her little chest. And I asked her to hold it for a minute. And I said, um, I was praying and I said, you will behold the face of God. And as you behold the face of God, remember this cross. And I'll keep it in my hands and you can behold my face and I'll behold the cross and behold you. And um, and then I placed her into the little casket and uh, screwed the top of it on. Um, and it was uh, just a very, very beautiful moment. And Antonia 
uh, she was so touched uh, and so impressed by the moment, and so was the staff of the uh, of the uh, the funeral home uh, because it was a very sacred moment. Wow. And then when we committed the casket at the at the cemetery, um, uh, I had tied the brass cross onto the wooden cross that was on top of the casket, and I had asked. Uh, your nephew Damien, if he would carry his jackknife, and he did, and uh, he asked me what I was going to use it for, and I told him I was going to cut the brass cross off, and he said, oh, grandfather, grandfather, that will make my jackknife a sacramental, because it will touch Susanna's <laughs> James son, by the way. But... <laughs> so at the, he's uh, six years old, seven years old, I don't know, and uh, so I asked him for the, for the knife, and at the at the cemetery and I cut the brass cross off the top of the casket and um, I presented it to Samuel and I told him I said behold your father in heaven has given you the cross of Christ and um, it was just a moment that I knew it was the truth that uh, all of Christianity the academics as well as the folks that go to church on Sunday, um, none of us really know how the cross of Christ works and why God the Father ordained that Christ would die on the cross and that would create our salvation. It doesn't really, it's not really reasonable. It, it doesn't follow reason it's not something that can be communicated easily but in that moment at the graveyard at the at the Susanna's gravesite when i gave that cross to samuel um in my heart it was just uh, total pure understanding that uh love crucified uh love broken heart open wide and uh, the wisdom of God the Father and how the cross of Christ is, um, is forever the truth of this life and um, a true mercy, a true mercy to a family uh, is not always uh, what it would be like if we wrote it, but that God's in charge and um, and our salvation uh, does not come cheaply. And uh, redemption is bought by the blood of the innocent, the blood of Christ and the blood of Susanna, because she suffered in her disabilities for five days. And um, Brianne uh, talked to me after, the, after Susanna died. She came over and talked to me and... Um, she said, you know, Susanna only lived five days. That was not enough time. And I said to her, I said, that was all the time she could do. If you're hanging on a cross, don't, you don't want to hear someone say, three hours is not enough, Lord. The three hours is all the Lord could do. He did his best, three hours is what he could do. And Susanna did five days. And uh, she changed the Damasi family forever uh, through the marriage of Samuel and Brienne and through their family and to our family. Um, and um, it's, it was really, in my heart, uh, so real, the crucifixion of love and um, the gift of purity and innocence on our behalf. Samuel did say um, to me, Luke, we asked their permission to do this program, and they said yes. Um, he said, just make sure you say mom, especially if there's a family out there that has a, a trisomy baby that maybe is not going to make it um, to hold the baby. He said, if I could give any word for anyone, it would be hold your baby. And, uh, and they did. That's what they did. Samuel and Brianne and all the kids. And so now we go on to this this time, which I don't think anyone's quite prepared for bereavement. It looks different for a lot of folks. 
but I know that the Lord carries us in his grace, and I think they know that for sure, too, the family in St. Mount Brian. And uh, that the little incidences happen, just sort of on a, a side note, Brian was going home one night after being here at the house, and uh, Susanna was born on the Feast of St. Francis. And um, <laughs> Brianna told a story. She said, you know, I, I've always wanted to see a moose, but I've never seen a moose. And you know Aiton Road, the road that we live down. And uh, she's driving home. It's night. And dang, a huge moose jumped out of the woods and started running alongside her car. She could not believe it. She turned. She, she first said, what is that? Is that a horse? Of course, it's way too big to be a horse. And um, and she just started smiling because she said, well, thanks, Susanna. I mean, like, that's kind of cool, you know. <laughs> and then something else happened. Um, she started seeing different wildlife, you know, at different times, things that she's never seen before or not experienced. But they're just little moments where, you know, she just could say, thanks, Susanna. And I think that the whole family says thanks to Susanna for coming to us. And uh, Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that detail of the of St. Yeah. Francis. Um, their little caresses, um, like these, you guys would say everything's spiritual, but it's, it is true. <laughs> There's, it's all, it is. <laughs> and um, I mean, when you, I remember when Andre, you guys mentioned Andre, when dad, you said you found out you, you just wanted to hold him really. Um, I don't know how old I would have been um, from 35. Maybe I was 15, 16. Well, he's almost 21. He's 21 next week. No, two weeks, actually. Two. <laughs> yeah, so I've been about 14. But like when I found out about it, I was, I mean, on the inside, I didn't say anything on the outside because I just felt like that would be so wrong to say, to think something bad about, you know, that your brother and like, you know, but on the inside, I was, I was very uncomfortable with the idea that, you know, he was going to have Down syndrome and, and he's, you know, I was, the whole thing was like a big deal for me. Um, but I remember like it was actually right after he was born and, and we just start, had Andre. He's completely changed my life. Like from 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 when he was born until now, there's there's been a massive impact um, on in, in, in special ways as well. That I wouldn't be able to explain in words, but that I'm convinced that these are things that are, you know, that the Lord is speaking through him. And uh, someone told me today that was Mother Angelica when she had someone call up on her show and she said, Mother, I just found out I'm pregnant with a Down syndrome baby and I just want to know what your thoughts were. And she said, um, for all you mothers out there, when you find out that you have a Down syndrome baby or a baby that has a defect and, you know, could be any chromosomal disorder, she says you need to kneel down and kiss the floor um, because God just sent you a huge blessing. You know, paraphrasing Mother Angelica. But um, when I heard that, I heard yeah. I, I heard that, and I understood exactly. I I understood it perfectly. The, you know what what that is to to have somebody amongst you, and like Susanna Hope, um, for me, you know, people just because we're so caught up in what we're living right now, we're we don't even have two seconds to think about anything. We're constantly going, we're coming, we're on the phone. It's just just it's just like a tor. Just life is just like flying by. And so if someone hears this, they would not be able to see what's the big deal. Like, you know, well, you know, like the fact that she even had her was odd. She should have gotten rid of it in the beginning, just moved on, you know, just moving on, moving on. But I think for us, especially you said, Dad, that the Massey family, like this has been a this has been a huge injection of of uh, of something huge. I think that is like that we're going to be slowly finding out, you know, as time's going on. But uh, God has sent us a massive blessing with Susanna Hope, and it was because of Samuel and Brienne's openness and because of their faith. I think it's going to fort fortify their faith as well. Uh, there was a picture there with Samuel and her, and they're both holding the rosary. I think that's that's also just, a, I mean, that's an image that's, that says a million things. But um, what are the graces? like? Have you guys seen anything? I know you mentioned somebody there that was touched at the funeral. I don't know if you can maybe mention that. Uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? Because no, he, no, he couldn't I, put it into words, so he went like well, this. Just I, this. <laughs> I want to tell a story as it really happened, and Mom says you can't do that. No, you uh, can't mention names or anything. But, you don't um, have to mention names, but just go for it. It's okay. 
All right. So anyway, this young man I had never met before, and um, and we, we had uh, the committal, and then and then we had a reception here at the home. And so people came back to the house, and um, uh, we we just kind of socialized for about six or seven hours. And toward the end of the evening, I I uh, noticed that this young man was kind of by himself, and he had a beautiful, beautiful um, eighteen month old son uh, that he was taking care of very, very well. So I, I kind of uh, befriended him and jokingly started being with him and lighthearted and, and we were talking and, um, and he ended up telling me, he said, uh, you know, experiencing today, he said, I would like to become Catholic. Wow. And he said, because the idea that there is nothing that there is no God, and that there is no eternity, and there is no redemption is too much for me to bear as I look at my son. Because for myself, I might be able to go through life that way. But I said, he said, I cannot raise my son um, in a nihilist uh, idea of life where there is nothing. And uh, he said, I, I would like to learn more and uh, come into the church because what I experience today is the truth, wow. that there is eternal life and that life, every life matters. Wow. And uh, I thought that that was really beautiful. That was really beautiful. Wow. That's a massive grace. Yeah. He, he was a young father. Yeah. yeah, the impact. Like I said, I've been getting emails as well from people that has touched their, it's touched them. Um, I mentioned this on a program we did a couple of weeks ago with Father Colum, and I just really mentioned it in a, in a sentence. And people had asked me if they could know more about this and that they were touched. Like it is, I said, like it is, I think it is getting out there. These kind of things, the Lord has his way of using his instruments, you know, like we're we're in our world and in our family and it's it impacting us. But I think he's using Susanna Hope as well to get to other people. I know there's a guy here in Ireland, his son or daughter was diagnosed with um, trisomy 18 and he caught word of this as well, and it's given him a big consolation. And he's he's gonna probably be investigating more. And I hopefully hopefully he watches this, um, so that like I said, it's gonna inject hope at the end of the day. Like I think little Susanna is gonna be giving us this vision where we stop looking at what's here in front of us. You know, like if this was everything, and we start looking up to the next life and preparing ourselves to go up there. You know, where there is no suffering, there is no pain, there is no desolation or bereavement. It's just an eternity of of bliss like for you know what we're created for so she has a huge mission and she was born for it and thanks be to god sam and brienne were open to her and like i said i'm i've never been more proud of them to tell you the truth like i said when when i found out they eloped and got married i didn't know what the deal was going to be i didn't know if this was going to be something that was just you know a little little fuzzy that they felt and they they made a huge thing of getting married and making it you know public <laughs> but uh They've been going strong and, and they're growing say, stronger. I think it's I think it's very beautiful. We agree to to uh, Father Luke that uh, Samuel and Brianne and their kids. Samuel and Brianne, they're deeply in love, and they've really experienced a huge suffering and a loss. But they also understand the gift that Susanna was the gift to them, and that that she's just beginning being the gift in their lives. And so I um, have huge respect for both of them. And, of course, I have a very maternal heart for Brienne, um, for, for her loss, but also for her journey, because she's quite a remarkable woman, and uh, she's great. Well, praise God. Yeah, the, and as a family, they have a lot of work to do. Um, and... Uh, uh, they, they will, they will do it, and they will go through it, and uh, and I, I really believe that they'll just come out steeled, really strong, um, and uh, very mature and serious young people. Well, praise God. Um, this has been great. I really appreciate it. And for Samuel and Brienne, hopefully, if they're watching, I had to ask them permission as well because I didn't know if it was, you know, the moment. Um, but so, but they said go ahead, and they're they were all on board. Brienne sent us those pictures, um, which are very good, by the way. There's there's loads of them still. 
Um, but thank you, mom and dad, for coming on and sharing that. Uh, by the way, there have been more requests that you both come back on. Maybe this could be something that we could do um, the tandem or by yourselves. I don't know. But we'll have to think of something to get you back on because, dad, there's a lot of questions that um, a, f a lot of fathers had. And they, they want answers because you hinted at some things in your last one. And I think they want more delving. And mom, the same for you. Like we could just maybe get a list of questions. We're going to do an episode with Father Colum on the 8th. And it's going to be called Mom Bombs. So they're basically just phrases that mothers have said that have been like moments of, of light and grace, you know, in direct moments. He says they're very providential and good. Like So he's going to do the whole episode on on the mom bombs that he's heard in his, his pastoral uh, experience. So, but anyways, thank you so much, uh, mom and dad. I uh, love you both. And uh, this has been beautiful. We're coming into the month of November as well, which is also providential remembering our deceased and that they're there and praying for all those in purgatory. I can say with, you know, Claire, I think we can all say that Susanna's she's up there. She must've gone up like a rocket. And so praise God, she's up there and she's interceding and she's already working big miracles. So, uh, we'll end with a prayer and the blessing. And uh, like I said, we'll be in touch, hopefully, to get you guys back on. Okay. Father, Son, the Holy Amen. Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was, As it was, it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.